I'm going to be ranking all 34 killer trailers in Dead by Daylight. Leave a like and comment what your favourite trailer is. Let's get straight into it. Starting off with the C tier killer trailers, we have Wraith. Now Wraith was one of the earliest killers to have a killer trailer, so it was very basic and they used a lot of in-game cinematics, stagnant kind of panning shots across different areas of the map, showing his ability a little bit as well. Again, it's, it's, it's very basic, it's very simplistic. This was 2016 Dead by Daylight, you've got to bear in mind, so although he is at the bottom of this list, you've got to give them credit for what they had to work with. They did a very good job considering. Up next, we have Nurse. Now, Nurse, again, it was very simplistic and they used in-game cinematics for this uh, killer trailer. I feel like they did a little bit more with this one, though. They added text. They made it seem a little bit more like an actual trailer, like an actual teaser. But it was very, very simple. It just had the Nia running around, being chased by the Nurse. Besides that, though, it's a very basic trailer. There's not a whole lot to say about it. And now we move on to the Hillbilly. Hillbilly's killer trailer was also one of the oldest to exist. Um, I think they did a much better job of showcasing the corn on the map, on the original Cold Wind, back when it was a dark map. I like that they showcased his ability and the speed that he can go with his chainsaw by changing the tempo of the killer trailer. I think that was a very nice touch. It was very simple, um, but very effective. So that's why I'm putting Billy above the nurse there. Also in the C tier, we have Hag. Hag's trailer was very, very short, very simplistic, and it was more or less just a teaser of the killer themselves. I believe it was one of the earlier times that they'd outsourced cinematics into their trailers as opposed to just in-game gameplay. And I think they did a good job with it. It was just very short. It didn't reveal a whole lot. There was a lot more they could have done with it to uh, hype up the chapter. So that's why I'm putting Hag there in the C tier grade. Finally, in the C tier grade for killer trailers, we have the Nightmare Freddy, Freddy Krueger. Now, again, I believe it was very, very short and didn't reveal a whole lot besides showing the killer themselves, him slowly walking towards you just as the camera pans up towards his face is very, very simple and very basic. I kind of wish they'd have done a lot more for Freddy when he was first announced. I think it was a very lackluster trailer, but it was still doing a little bit more for me than the hag, so that's why I've put it just above. But I don't think it did enough to get into the B tier of killer trailers that I'm going to be showing. Now we're moving on to the B tier of killer trailers. First up in the B tier list, we have Leatherface's trailer. Now, I thought that the way they did this trailer was very, very cool. I liked how they turned it onto you. Um, just before they announced who the actual killer was going to be. Saying, what is his mask made of? You. The only thing I wish they could have done was really actively show the killer a lot more in the trailer. They didn't really do that at all. You didn't really know what to expect. It really just was a teaser trailer, so it was very short, very sweet. But it got the job done. I think it was just enough to get into B. Next up is Doctor's trailer. I believe that they did a much better job with this trailer than most of the other ones, especially considering the age of which this chapter is now. I think the jump scare factor, albeit fairly cheap and not too crazy, was quite cool to be seen within a killer trailer. I also like that they showcased Fung Min as well during the trailer. They didn't really do that a lot with the other trailers, um, too much anyway. Uh, I like that you get to really see her for a few moments repairing the generator before the jump scare happens. But all in all, it was quite a clean cinematic. I think it was very, very smooth, and I like the way that they executed it. Next up in B tier, we have Plague. Now, Plague cinematic was very, very simple, very similar to Freddy's. I like that they changed the camera angle to look towards her looking in the mirror, and I really like at the end the eye twitch looking towards the actual camera, the viewer. I think that was a lot more effective in this trailer than any of the other ones that they tried. And again, very simple, very simplistic, didn't really reveal a lot, uh, but it was quite effective, I think. Up next, we have Huntress. Now, Huntress's was pretty good. I think it was very simple again, but there are a few more cinematic changes, and I really like the way that they did the sound effects on this one. I think it was really cool how they made the music and the humming cut out completely when she turns around. And it showcases her ability a little bit as well, which a lot of other trailers don't really do too well. So yeah, I think it was a lot more effective, but obviously still fairly plain. Now, after Huntress, we have Spirit. Now, Spirit's killer trailer was interesting. I think the teaser trailer that they had before the actual reveal was um, 
more interesting. I think it led in more to the lore side of things and how Spirit became to be. But the actual trailer itself for Spirit, uh, showcasing the killer and Adam, was very, very bleak, quite simple, and didn't really reveal a whole lot besides the characters. I thought it was quite eerie, quite creepy, and it was very well executed, but it was still quite slow. Um, made it seem more horror, but it didn't really encapture too much of like how the killer would be in game. So that's why it's a little bit lower down for me, but it's still a solid killer trailer. Night is next on this list. Now, Night obviously is a little bit more of a recent chapter within the DBD universe. So it was a lot better executed than the previous chapters, especially with the cinematics. The quality you can tell has been vastly improved, especially from the beginning with Wraith, Nurse, Billy, um, the early days of killer reveals. Despite it looking so good, it doesn't really showcase too much about each of the knight's uh, henchmen's abilities. I really liked how they portrayed Vittorio in this killer trailer. I do believe that he showed off a lot of charm, a lot of flair. But besides that, I feel like it was quite a lackluster trailer in the actual content that you see. He's just kind of being surrounded. So that's why Knight is in the B tier. This next one might be a bit of a hot take, but it is the brand new Chucky trailer. Obviously the Chucky trailer is brand new as of the date of this video. However, I feel like the majority of the trailer was kind of just showing like a revamped Ormond from a first person perspective, just walking up the stairs. There's not really a whole lot to the trailer. Besides the little bit at the end with Chucky stabbing the victim, turning around and swearing at you, which I thought was funny. I don't think it really carried as much of the trailer as they meant for it to. I like the beginning where they zoom into the TV to show the advertisement. I feel like it would have been better for them to use a slightly older aesthetic throughout the trailer, considering the era that Chucky was initially introduced into the horror genre. But overall, I kind of struggle to find a reason as to why I would put it any higher than this rank at the moment. So Chucky's going to sit fairly firmly, but not too impressively in the B tier for me. Next up, we have Skull Merchant. Now, again... It's a beautifully made trailer. It looks cinematically very, very well done. You can tell that they've improved vastly on the previous chapters of reveal trailers and the quality that is shown is nuts. However, again, it doesn't really showcase much of Skull Merchant's ability. And the scenario that Renato and Thalita find themselves in seems to be something very generic in the grand scheme of things. I also found that Skull Merchant didn't seem very intimidating during this trailer. I didn't really have a reason to be scared. She didn't really come across as much of a threat besides slowly walking towards these two siblings. I think it was a really nice chapter for the survivors as it gave two different survivors in the same chapter that had a direct bond between each other. Overall though, Skull Merchant is in the B tier in the same kind of area as Knight with the same kind of reasoning. Next up on the list, we have Artist. Now, Artist was very interesting. I think it was atmospherically very pleasing. I liked the way that they portrayed Artist herself. I think they did Jonah a little bit dirty. There wasn't too much to be shown in his regard. However, it was a very, very nicely made trailer. I like the way that they used the blurring and focusing into the distance to see the artist walking towards the camera. I think that was a very nice touch. And I also like that they incorporated the use of her power in the trailer so you could see what it kind of did. And although it's not really the scariest of trailers, which is why it kind of hinders this ranking, it did seem intimidating enough to put it in the B tier for me. Heading towards the upper end of B tier, we have Pinhead. Now, Pinhead's was quite simple. It was a fairly short killer trailer, and it did just showcase exactly what you would expect with Pinhead. With it being a licensed release chapter, it was very highly anticipated, and they really did not disappoint with the trailer itself. I think the way they introduced Pinhead into the realm was very, very simplistic, but also very sensible as well. I think it's exactly what you would expect. So although there aren't many surprises here, and it's not too haunting in this trailer, I think the fact that it was a licensed chapter um, really did add to the hype of this, and I think it was a very, very well animated killer trailer as well. Finally, to round off B tier, we have the Saw's Pig chapter. I really enjoyed watching this killer trailer. I remember when it first came out as well. I think it revealed exactly how the killer was going to work inside the trailer. It was very effectively done, and it looked gorgeous, especially for the time that it was released. I think Behaviour did a brilliant job of intertwining the Saw world and the Saw universe with the Dead by Daylight universe. And despite the trailer being quite short and very simplistic, it was executed brilliantly. And the shock factor of seeing a very, very split second image of Dwight's head being popped by the head trap, I think really, really gave it a bit of a shock factor at the end as well, which really added to the hype of this chapter when it was released. 
We're now moving into A tier killer trailers from my personal opinion, and first up is Trapper. Now Trappers was pretty much the first killer trailer that they had, and I think as a result of that, it was a lot higher quality back then than the further releases of other killers. They showcase characters that aren't even in the game anymore, I think this is pre-alpha. Trapper's killer trailer is showcased in a very similar way to how the generic Dead by Daylight cinematics are played out. I think it was also kind of used in parallel to the release of Dead by Daylight as a showcase for the game. So obviously I think they put a lot more effort and a lot more budget at the time into this cinematic for Trapper. Overall, I think they did an amazing job of setting the scene and showing off some of the characters at the time, as well as the Trapper himself and his ability that he has. And that's why I think it really snuck into A tier for me, despite it being much older of a trailer than most others in this list. Next in the list, we have Clown. Now, Clowns, I think, was very well made. It was a slightly longer trailer, and it showcased not only the clown and how sinister he comes across, but also Kate has her own kind of solo cinematic which shows her off very nicely and sets the scene with the killer and the camera itself moving towards the campfire, as well as showing a little bit about how she is. She seems like a country girl from first impressions, which she is, as well as the fact that she writes music, plays music, uses her guitar. Because of the added length of the killer trailer, I think it really just snuck into A tier for me, just for an overall package of how much more effort they put in with this specific chapter in comparison to others. Twins is next in this tier list, and I believe Twins was a very, very well-executed killer trailer. I think the use of first person from Elodie's perspective, hiding behind the tree and peeking out, and then incorporating a little bit of a jump scare with Victor was really, really well done. I think it was a bit of a unique twist on killer trailer perspectives at the time when it was released. I don't think they'd really done that before, or at least not effectively like this. I also think it showed off the twins very well. You could see Charlotte at the beginning of the trailer very, very sinister looking with a downwards angle facing up towards her, as well as the kind of horror-themed midnight forest kind of vibe that was happening. I think overall this was a very, very well done trailer. Next in the list we have Death Slinger. Now, Death Slinger's killer trailer was incredibly well made. I think it set the scene for Dead Dog Saloon's map. It had a really nice western take and it just looked gorgeous in the trailer. I think it was very, very eerie how slow the harpoon was being reeled in by the Death Slinger. And then when it finally shows Death Slinger's face when he tips up his cap, it's just such an unsettling image. And I think they really, really executed this trailer so well. I think the only thing that lets this trailer down a little bit was that you didn't see Zarina in the trailer at all. I feel like they should have incorporated her even slightly. But besides that though, I think they did a, a tremendous job. Pyramid Head is up next in this tier list. I believe Pyramid Head and the Silent Hill chapter release was so hyped when it first came out. And I think the way that they portrayed Cheryl sneaking around the corner and then the Pyramid Head slowly moving up towards her. This killer trailer looked gorgeous. I think it was so well done. It looked really hyper realistic. And I think they did a really great job of showing off the effects that were shown in this trailer. From the blackening around the door frame to the actual ability that Pyramid Head has. As well as showing the map off a little bit there with the actual Midwich Elementary School. Overall, this looked so good. And no doubt, it needed to be in the A tier. Next up, we have Legion. I think it came across really well with the twist in the middle. Showing that the other survivor was in fact the killer, who eventually put the mask on. Despite it not being as creepy, I think that the plot twist in the middle of it, with the other survivor actually being the Legion, and killing David in cold blood, was a really, really nice twist on the trailer. I love the high quality focus at the end, just staring at the Legion as he's kind of rubbed blood across his mask's mouth. And I think overall it was a very, very well made trailer. Next up we have Demogorgon. Now, the announcement of Stranger Things was incredibly hype. I believe this is the most viewed killer trailer out of the lot. And rightly so. It was so hype when it first came out and was announced. I like that they showed off both Steve and Nancy, as well as Demogorgon's looming threat, and also just showing off the Hawkins lab map. It was a bit of a shorter trailer, but I think it got carried by how well done the environment looked in this trailer, which is why I'm giving it a well-deserved A tier spot. I think Dredge's killer trailer is next up now. I like that Hattie had a lot more of a focal point from this killer trailer and that the trailer kind of revolved around her entering this house. And I think they did a very, very good job of showing just how eerie and creepy the Dredge is sneaking up very slowly from behind. 
I think atmospherically it was perfect, and I think the pacing of the actual trailer was very good, and obviously it looked great as well. We're now entering the top 10 of these killer trailers, and in at number 10, still in A tier, was Oni. I think Oni's killer trailer was so well done, and I really, really loved the colours that they showed off. The pinks and blues of Yui racing through with her motorbike. And then showing Oni at the end, there's a whole, like, juxtaposition. Wow, I'm throwing big words out. Holy moly. The juxtaposition of the more futuristic Yui Kimura with her motorbike, and then also a very, very legacy and outdated Oni standing in her way causing her to stop, and just showing those two conflicting eras in time, I think was really well done and very clean. It also equally showed off just how badass Yui is, as well as how menacing Oni is, without it being too scary. Next up is Blight. I believe this was almost perfectly done. The only downside they had was that they didn't feature Felix at all, but focusing on the Blight really, really worked well with this trailer, and the screech at the end with the Blight looking directly at the camera and pacing and pouncing towards it was such a nice little addition to the end of the killer trailer. I think overall this is so well done. This is definitely the higher end of A tier for me. Nemesis and the first Resident Evil chapter in Dead by Daylight is next up. I think they did such a good job of showing the threat of Nemesis in this trailer, basically killing Meg within the trailer, and then introducing Jill, Leon, Claire, and Chris all in one trailer, as well as revealing that there were going to be legendary sets and all four characters could be playable was so nice. And I think they did a very good job of giving everybody a little bit of airtime, just the right amount, without it being too much or hindered by the fact that they didn't have voice actors in this sense. I love the way that the map looked, RPD inside and also the courtyard outside where Meg initially gets found is so well made and you can tell that they really took a step up in this era of Dead by Daylight and the artists that worked on the game for these reveal trailers had vastly improved. Singularity's end transmission chapter is next up. I know, it wasn't programmed to harm the crew. We're putting it here. I think they did a really good job of focusing on Gabriel and giving him a lot of airtime to showcase his character. I love that they had actual voice lines for him as well. And Singularity showing up, rising from the ground in this kind of weird eerie effect, very alien-like, was so well done. It looked incredibly well made. This is one of the newer trailers, so obviously it is, without a doubt, one of the best made ones that they've got. But I really like that they told a story throughout this trailer. Rounding out the A tier for me is Wesker and the second Resident Evil chapter for Dead by Daylight. It goes without saying, seeing Ada walking into the actual RPD building and then turning around and giving her a little kind of charming smirk and nodding away to get the other survivors to move was already so good. I think Ada is such an iconic character anyway. And then Wesker comes barging through the door with the voice lines as well. I like that they incorporated a palette that Ada can drop and then it just had that extreme close-up, slow zoom towards Wesker's face, followed by a blackout and then ending the trailer with a another voice line. Overall, this trailer was so hyped to me. I, I, it, maybe I'm slightly biased, but for me, this was one of the best. I remember seeing this when it came out, and I think it just looked amazing as well, despite it even being a little bit shorter. Now we're heading into the top tier S rank that I've set. In at number 5 is Xenomorph. This trailer had everything. It set the scene beautifully for the alien universe to be integrated into Dead by Daylight, showing off Ellen Ripley and the Xenomorph, and adding a lot of character to both sides. I especially loved the pacing of this, and I loved the alien-inspired trope of Xenomorph creeping up closely behind the shoulder of Ellen Ripley. This was an absolute cinematic masterpiece, and it could not go anywhere but S rank for me. In at number four, we have the Myers Halloween Killer Trailer. This is a much older killer trailer, however, it really stood the test of time and it still looks incredible to this day. My favourite part of this killer trailer is where Laurie is listening closely towards the door that the Myers is standing on right at the other side of and seeing the camera shift past the door, looking at both sides, it was a very simple but super effective touch. I think the threat level that Myers carries from a reputational standpoint is already top tier, but it really delivered well in this killer trailer. And I think it really made a great first impression for this DLC. In at number three now we have the Onryo, setting the scene of the Onryo and showing Yoichi beforehand leading up to when we discover that it's the Onryo is incredibly well done. I think the eeriness of Onryo's presence was really well captured, and they built up this killer trailer so nicely. I loved the sound effects that they added into this, 
And they took their time pacing the killer trailer as well. It lasted a bit longer than most. And I think it was a masterpiece from start to finish. Introducing Yoichi. And then ending with the introduction of Omrio. Overall, this was incredibly well done by the devs. Now, for the silver position, second place, in my opinion, is Ghostface. I think this trailer was so well done. This trailer was faultless, in my opinion. I think it did everything right. It really added to the comicality of Ghostface. It gave him a lot of charisma and personality, as you've come to expect with the Scream franchise. And I think it was a really nice change of theme when it was introduced. Because of it not really being inside of a an eerie or dilapidated horror scene. It was quite a light-hearted. It was in a convenience store. And I just love the little features in the animation, like when Ghostface chucks the money to still pay for the meal, <laughs> I think was really good. I think just little features like that, especially the little wave, the nodding wave, and the tilt of the head, really add up and makes this so fun. It was hard to not put this at number one, but number one is deserved. And now for the number one spot, we have, of course, Trickster. Now, this might be a little bit biased towards my anime-inspired side, but I really, really love the cartoon effect that they gave. I love the colors. I think it looked incredibly neat. I think it allowed the killer trailer to be a lot more creative as well. And using this anime style, I think, made it a lot easier for behavior to get across what they wanted to get across within the trailer. I think it was executed perfectly. I love the transition between getting the kill with the Dwight on the hook and then fading towards him being on the stage, facing away from the crowd. I really couldn't find fault within this killer trailer. And I think the uniqueness of this killer trailer really just boosted it up to the number one spot for me. And there you have it. That's my tier list for the top killer trailers in Dead by Daylight. Let me know what you think in the comments and don't forget to tell me your top three as well. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're new, and feel free to check out one of my other videos on screen. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care.